No, no. But right. That's yeah. the first thing to think of. You know, oh, yeah. It's like, oh, shit, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and if you'd gotten the same map that was filed with the town that we had. Mike's on there. Mike's on there. The light is on. That's what I'm with. So it's only just being amplified in this room. IT or something? I know. <laughs> I know. AV. 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 Somebody just pushed a TV in. Well, you know those older guys in computers back there. Mm. When Denise is in here to, to work on yeah. it. He's not good at the technical end of it. The files are in the computer. <laughs> <laughs> so everything we did, nothing's on the record. That's one of those. Reenact it? We have to go back. Do you have to No. <clears throat> I think it's something. All right, we're shooting. <coughs> so, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, February 5th meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Would the uh, clerk help me with the roll call, please? Uh, Chairman Harley? I am here. Clerk Roberts here. Mr. Hughes? Nope. <coughs> Mr. Oichel? Here. Mr. Hammer? Here. Mr. Omicki? <coughs> Nope. Mr. Dean? Here. Mr. Allard? Here. Mr. Silver? Here. Mr. Edwards? Here. Ms. Antonia? Here. All righty. So there are nine of us. Everybody's uh, playing in the sandbox tonight. <clears throat> we'll move on to item 3.1, a public hearing. Application number 2006-19-Z. This is for Lifeway Church seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2. Uh, to locate a religious institution at 2170 Berlin Turnpike. Would the applicant join us at the microphone? And if you would be kind enough to introduce yourself and then uh, the manner of your project. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Um, good evening. Thank you so much for, um, thank you for seeing, uh, giving me an opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, even though I'm a pastor, I promise I'm not going to go long. Um, my, uh, my name is Steve Cianci, and I'm the lead pastor at Lifeway Church, uh, formerly Cedar Mountain Church. Uh, for the past uh, four and a half years, we have been setting up and tearing down uh, each week at the Shriners Banquet Hall on the Berlin Turnpike in Newington. Uh, currently, we're under contract to purchase 2172 uh, Berlin Turnpike, which is the Super Club uh, building. Uh, and we are planning on continuing the current use as a daycare uh, and uh, preschool and after school programs. But we want to add the use, as you referred to, uh, under the provision section 5.2.b.2 in the Weathersfield Zoning Regulation to use the building as a religious institution. Um, so the additional uses, usage will be to assemble for worship on Sundays. The hours are very compatible between a daycare, how they operate, versus a church, which is usually in the evening and on the weekends. Um, and we also would want to meet as uh, various small groups throughout the week. Um, and we actually have a floor plan for your review. Gary from my board will um, we have that up on a poster board so you can see. The, the main change to the interior of the building would be just to um, uh, convert an existing rec space, which is uh, like a gym, and convert that to a sanctuary. And so our architect uh, drew this with 168 chairs, um, which uh, is really the main change, because the rest of the building is offices and classrooms, which we use the same space. So essentially, it'll be shared you know, we use it on a Sunday, they would use it during the week. So, but this is available, we can, anyone want to take a closer look at this? So, if you just want to. We actually have it in our package. You have, you have that, package. yeah, I just wanted a visual for you. So, okay. Thank you. Um, if you would just let me give you a, a little background about us, and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, my wife, Tina and I, uh, my wife, Tina's here. Uh, we planted the church in the fall of 2014. Uh, I grew up in the neighboring town of Newington. Uh, and outside of my college years, I have been a Hartford area resident my entire life. Uh, Tina and I have spent many years um, working with at-risk youth uh, and children. Um, and in 2014, we felt the call to plant a new life-giving church uh, right here in our community. 
And even before we launched, we engaged with human services uh, to get uh, involved in the community. Uh, and so we partnered over the past four years on uh, food drives, uh, help for the homeless, sponsoring gifts for families uh, around Christmas time. In coordination with human services, we've taken on different service projects as a church. For example, doing landscaping, painting, uh, cleaning up blighted properties, uh, and snow removal mostly for the elderly and disabled uh, residents. Uh, now, we started in Newington, but we have a Harford area vision. So I don't think it's any mistake that we have a building here that's right on the borderline between Wethersfield and Newington. And over the past couple years, we've, we've actually gotten more connected in, in Wethersfield. Um, I am part of a pastor's prayer group that meets in Wethersfield with uh, Pastor Derek uh, from First Church. Uh, as well as Pastor Scott from Wethersfield Evangelical Free, uh, and also Centerpoint Church and New Life Christian Fellowship are all part of the same fellowship. We meet for prayer, and this is a group of like-minded churches. Uh, we come together on Labor Day, uh, and you may or may not be aware, and we have a, a joint service at the park, uh, at the Cove, uh, at the Wethersfield Cove. Uh, and this year, the offering that day went to benefit um, Wethersfield Social Services. Um, we hold outreaches uh, for the homeless in New Britain and Hartford. Uh, we give out hugs and prayers and food and water and clothing and personal hygiene products. In addition, we hold uh, multiple free community events uh, throughout the year. Two main ones are our Trunk or Treat uh, and our Easter Egg Hunt. Um, and in these events, we spread some holiday cheer, but we also give out you know <laughs> thousands of pieces of candy and hundreds of hot dogs and, and um, you know, uh, popcorn and, and hot cocoa and all that, and no charge uh, to the community. Uh, we are active members of the Rotary, uh, as well as the Chamber of Commerce. We support local business uh, and uh, town events. In fact, the Macris Diner in Wethersfield is kind of like our uh, official restaurant for Lifeway uh, staff meetings, so uh, we're always there. Um, and all this community activity is really just part of the mission of a church, and our church in particular, uh, Lifeway Church. We exist to reach the one, uh, the one who feels disconnected, the one who's lost, the one who's lonely. And it is our mission to help them connect with God, others, and the community at large. So I'm highlighting the community aspect, but we have grown in other ways, kind of leading to the need for uh, a building. When we started, we had five people, and four of them were related to me. Um, so, and we were in our living room. Uh, but within a couple years, we were over 100 people. And then just last year, we joined forces with Mill Pond Church, uh, led by my good friend, uh, Pastor Joel Rissinger. And now we have two vibrant worship services each Sunday, 9, 9.30 and 11.15. Uh, we have small groups, as I mentioned, that meet throughout the week, um, n really in people's homes, and we'd like to bring those into the building. Um, those groups are, you know, we have men's groups, women's groups, uh, uh, children's uh, scouting, Christ-centered uh, scouting. Um, we also have a financial group, marriage group. In our financial group, um, local residents have paid off over $400,000 in local debt uh, as being part of our, our financial small groups. Um, in the end, though, it's really not about the numbers. It's about the individual life change that has been experienced by people. In our short history, we have seen people who were disconnected from God get connected. Um, marriages have been healed. People have been set free from life-controlling problems. Um, and really, the most exciting thing as a pastor is many have found their life's purpose uh, and it, while serving as part of the LifeWay uh, Dream Team. So imagine with me what we have proposed today as I wrap this up. Imagine with me what would happen if we had a building that was dedicated to this uh, purpose, to our mission, to help people connect with God, others, and the community. Not only do I believe we can preserve and improve the current daycare services that are there uh, for future generations of residents, but we would be a visible blessing in the community, a place to gather, a place to encourage, a place to heal, a place to fellowship, and a place to serve our community. Uh, I believe this would have a positive ripple effect, a ripple effect in the town of Wethersfield and beyond. Um, as you may be aware from my letter I uh, brought out a couple weeks ago, um, there is a pending foreclosure uh, for uh, the Super Club. 
Uh, now, we have managed to talk to the bank and postpone that till mid-February uh, to allow us to close on the building. Uh, but if the building goes to foreclosure auction, our understanding is the school will be closed and that will displace 50 children and 15 employees who we intend on hiring uh, once we buy the building. So we are asking whatever the commission can do to move our application forward uh, this evening would be greatly appreciated. Uh, the site plan has been reviewed by the town planner and town engineer. Uh, Derek Greger sent a memo uh, this morning uh, with 10 uh, comments slash requests. Um, and we have agreed to all 10 in writing. They're really relatively minor. We can talk through some of that if you'd like. Um, but we have agreed to all 10 of those in writing. And that's the letter I gave you today uh, to say that we're agreeing with all the things that he's asking uh, for. Gary Weber of Weber Construction is here. Um, he's uh, a member of my board and he can address any specific questions about, uh, you know, site plan or, or paving or whatnot. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much for your attention and consideration. And just let me know if you have any questions for myself or Gary. All right. Thank you very much. So um, we have a number of pieces of correspondence. The, the commission is, has been told that there's a response to um, uh, Mr. Gregor's <coughs> comments. Greg, uh, Gregor's comments are also on our table tonight because they weren't in the package. They just got done today. So uh, there's also a number of pieces of correspondence from Newington. So just for everybody's clarification, I understand Newington is done. They yes. So they have anyway. approved uh, both the site plan and the um, and the change of use, the special permit. Okay. All right, George. In relation to that, to Mr. Chairman. Um, can we make comments on the front part of the building and the front part of the site or not? I would assume yes. I Even mean, though it's been approved by the... Uh, uh, to your uh, point, okay. Uh, yeah, assistant commission. Well, you can make comments. Yeah, you can make comments. Right. <laughs> he doesn't have to pay attention. So well, I, mean, I we, want to we pay may attention. may not though. be able to enforce anything. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Because mm -hmm. I, as I looked at the site plan, I mean, most of the building is in Newington, and the adjacent uh, land adjacent to it, north of it, is in Weathersfield. So it's it's a, it's the front parking lot is Newington, the entrances are Newington, and then the front of the building is Newington. But actually, the back third, you know, or, or or two thirds really is is Weathersfield. Um, so. Um, yeah. That's as I understand it. That should be on one of those uh, diagrams, hopefully. Yeah. Why I asked Mr. Chairman, I may have two or three questions that pertain to the front part of the building or the parking lot out there or, or whatever. That's right. all. I'm sure you're, like, uh, like it's already been said, we'll listen to the comments, et cetera. Uh, Peter had a memo on January 30th. Did you respond to that one? Yes. So uh, we resubmitted on February 1st in response to that 30th memo of there's 22 uh, comments on there. Um, and then I think we there was a couple of them that were not fully addressed in that update that we did about a day and a half later. And then there's the 10 in the new memo. But I believe the 10 represents what's left because he even refers to number 12 of the original document as one that wasn't addressed, but I think everything else has been, as mm -hmm. I understand it. And that was just simply a timing thing. We only had a day and a half to respond. And uh, I think the request was for the uh, sewer lateral. Uh, and there had to be some research that by our engineer to uh, make sure that's uh, indicated properly on the, so we were not able to turn that around for February 1st, but we can get it uh, shortly. I think he was actually out there today looking at it. Um, so I think a little research has to be done there. You mean the sewer that goes out to the back? Yeah, they just want to make what sure that it's indicated on the, on the, on the uh, site plan, yes. And you're putting that in the plan? Yes, we are, and we, we're agreeing to that in writing. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Go ahead, George. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, the uh, trash containers you're putting in, you, you, the town asked you to do a more detailed thing on that, or show more of it, and uh, you have. 
can I ask the town plan or something on this? I used to go around town seeing a lot of trash enclosures with doors open. Can there be a way that the town requires those to be closed or locked at night or some other data, you know? That's or the, is that asking too much of an answer? That's the theory about having an enclosure. We would like to be it enclosed. Yeah, well, I'm not, I don't mean the container itself, but the doors to yes. the enclosure. Yes, yes. It, it, and you say it's meant to what? It's an enclosure, so it's meant to be enclosed. Oh, to be closed. That's oh, why we have gates on them. So you're defining it. Yes, oh, okay. I thought I'd want to clarify that for and you. If it isn't, it's, if it's chronic, I mean. Correct. I mean, I would say it's a problem throughout town. I mean, in, yeah, I would agree yeah, the trash, uh, trash why guys. Bringing it up, right? Not for this applicant. Sure. So, and I was wondering if there's any new ways of handling those enclosures so that they almost have to be locked when you... When yeah, you can spring them. load the gates, and but it then adds but to I keeping them open, the problem keeping them open when they're... In this they're day and age, I would think there's some way of handling that. But. Remote control, maybe, or something like that? <laughs> Drones. Drones. In his case, I was there yesterday afternoon, and uh, uh, the gal was bringing out her trash way to the back, and it's way down where that trash enclosure is, and you still intend to have it back in that corner area, right? So I believe so, Gary. Were we going to move that yeah. at all? Basically, we're going to pour we're going to pour a slab there and put mm -hmm. the fencing around it. Any questions? Um, Any questions? So yeah, the uh, oh. That's right. Go ahead, George. Go no, ahead. Go. Uh, no, I had to attend to it. Go ahead, Yolanda. But go ahead. Okay, you I'll go. To, Thanks. Go uh, just out of curiosity, um, I got a chance to look at the site plan that we that was submitted, and just looking at some of the comments that the, the town engineer in Newington had, and our town engineer in Weathersfield, there were comments about location of handicap uh, stalls and um, additional the need for additional handicap parking spaces and also the the kind of uh, how we're counting how you are counting for the parking for compact cars and I was just wondering good that you got everything resolved in Newington and in Weathersfield regarding parking but I was just wondering how was that resolved Gary you want to address that yeah. I could guess but he'll do it better okay. so <laughs> My name's Gary Weber. I own uh, Weber's Nursery Incorporated in Newington. I'm a paving and landscape contractor. I've been in business for 37 years, and I'm a board member and a member of the church. And uh, I feel that I'm well suited to doing this, and, and I put a lot of effort into it, a lot of thought. I've been here to see Peter a few times. Um, and with all the comments, we tried to address them in the most economical way and the best way possible for, for ease of construction and uh, cost effective because it is a church. The handicap spots we added in the front here, one of the comments was why aren't they over here? The whole piece of property is on a slope and a few years back the ADA compliance went to a 2% cross slope in, our, in the direction. It would be very difficult to maintain 2% in the front here. And Gary Furstenberg from Newington was actually the guy who suggested why don't we cut this out and put them in here it's probably the flattest spot in the front yard. So we moved from here to here. There was a handicap spot back here, and we were originally eliminating it. And after talking to uh, Derek Greger, we decided that we would keep this ramp. There's another note in there about a concrete ramp that needed to be repaired, and we put a notation of how to repair it, you know, the detail of what we were going to do with it, and we're keeping that additional handicap spot. Because with a small wall here, there, there's uh, an existing wall there. We'll be able to meet grade in that one spot, but I don't, I don't think we could get more in there. It's just too steep. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no additional questions here, this is a public hearing, so I'll invite anybody in the public who wishes to comment on the plan at this point. Okay. Come on up and join us. If you just uh, cede the microphone. My name is Tim Toole, 886 Ridge Road, Wethersfield. I've known Gary in, um, for over 30 years. I'm very anxious for them to succeed in their venture 
forming, uh, building a church here in Wethersfield. And I hope you approve their application. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? All right. Any, George, you have some more questions? So I could, do, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to tell you, don't go too far. <laughs> trying to run away. I, that was your chance. Good. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, George. Oh, oh, to him. I'm sorry. I, and maybe to whoever here. Uh, it's, down, it's a town planner, really, maybe. Um, are all, is all the concrete going to be corrected that's falling apart? The sites are not in good shape, especially around the front and uh, that side area we're just discussing. And you're going to be redoing that at the northeast corner, is that correct? As far as concrete work, uh, as I understand it, and Gary can jump in, um, we're cutting the sidewalk that's pretty much damaged in the front. We're actually removing that and paving. Uh, and then the entrance, we're re-pouring the concrete for that entrance. Uh, on the side, we're repairing the, the concrete. We're cutting and repairing the concrete on the, uh, on the ramp. Um, as to, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to that. A ramp. Oh, the ramp there's a handicap handicaps. ramp on the side of the building. Um, that's it's going, going uphill or west, yeah. Yes. So if we look at the, the uh, revised site plan, if you notice on the original, as uh, this is the original site plan, that you have a copy of this also. It shows a sidewalk across the front with no parking up against the front wall. In order to achieve parking here, we needed to widen our aisle space. And that sidewalk that's in uh, great disrepair, the water's running over it, and we have a water problem in the front of the building. And how we're going to address that is by moving it back, we're going to repave this and recurb it when we put this paving in. It'll help to solve the water problem here by directing it where it needs to go, which is into the drainage system instead of the building. And it'll also take care of the uh, broken concrete all at the same time. So that's going to be repaved. And then the front ramp, we have a, handy, a new ADA-compliant handicap ramp right in front of the building. And that's denoted right there. Okay. Good. And as far as the broken concrete where the steps are, that was addressed with the, um, the it's kind of all tied together, the uh, concrete repair there. And the method we're using is we're just going to saw cut it. We're going to drill and pin it and report it. Um, what are you doing about paving of the entire lot? There are a lot of serious holes, and it makes, makes some of the potholes around the state right now or the region here are looking I don't know, like you need to do something. Well, I thought now, we'd follow. Pastor, I happened to see him today right. when I went over there, and he said you were going to patch. But yeah, you're not going to be repaving any pieces of at, it at well, this multi-phase, right? So right. Phase one, our plan was not to repave the entire lot. That that was not in the budget. It was to just, you know, fix and repair the front, do the masonry work, and um, you know, we would eventually repave the entire thing. That that's definitely in the in the goal. I'm sorry if you want to add. To yeah, that. I, no, I, exactly. Um, we're working within a tight budget. We're a small congregation. At this point, we need to make it safe. Uh, we need to make it compliant. Um, I know that a cut and a patch is acceptable for asphalt repair. Um, it would be really nice if we could pave it. And as our budget develops with what we have to do inside, we still have to do some renovation to the inside uh, that we're working. After we get through this phase, the next phase will be with the building department. So to, to answer, are we going to pave it? Our plan is no. Are we going to fix the holes? Absolutely. We're going to make it safe to walk on. And uh, we want it to be aesthetically pleasing for people to come there so that it's an inviting place for them to put their children, a uh, place to come on a Sunday and worship. We don't, we don't want it to look like it does now. It's in, it's in serious disrepair. And if we had to address every broken piece in that building, it would just be astronomical and unattainable. And the building would just end up in foreclosure and someone's going to rip it down and put up a shopping center. I mean, it's, it's really in bad shape. And our goal is to fix every piece of it, but we have to do it as money becomes available. So you don't have any clear phasing of it or time for that? Well, we need to repair the parking lot. 
yeah. for the uh, town of Newington up in front here. There's some holes and there's a couple in here. The rest of the sheet asphalt down in here is in pretty good shape. Um, in our dry vial here, there's a, a pretty big one. They're not, they're not denoted on here. Um, neither um, Derek Greger nor Gary Furstenberg, either town engineer, asked for that. Um, otherwise, we would have denoted them on here. The what? We would have denoted them on the plan, <coughs> but neither town engineer required it or asked for it. Okay. Um, how about the uh, trash over the bank down there? And also, by the way, while I got you here, you're, you're going to show the line that they mentioned on here, the sanitary line going out to the main trunk line down yes. the bottom of the bank out there. And the pastor said to me today that you would be removing the obvious pieces of human trash back there. We don't mean trees and stumps on that thing. But like the rusty barrel the and that kind of stuff, stuff you wanted that removed, we're, we're, we're going to be I assume cleaning oh. it. Oh, yeah, we'll be cleaning it, but we, we don't own it right now. now so. Is that re recognized in here by the town staff and, and the approval for we're saying in the letters? Um, no, it was never addressed. It wasn't addressed by the town planner. It wasn't addressed by the town engineer. But I mean, it is our plan, though. Uh, you know, we want the property to look good. So our first goal is to go in and clean up any of the garbage, any of that stuff that's thrown in the back, and then we're cleaning that building from top to bottom. Our multi-phase project, phase zero, is get in, close on the building, right, and operate the daycare. That's phase zero. Phase one will be hope by by spring. We hope to have our CO. We've done all the interior work and to the satisfaction of the uh, you know the building department here in town um, and then uh, and then over the next year would be phase you know phase two really which is fixing everything else in the building as 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 money comes available so th that's kind of how we're uh, addressing that um, but we're very concerned uh, that the, the property the owner lives in Florida I don't want to disparage him but he's kind of absentee um, and there's been zero investment in this property, it looks like, in almost 20 years. So I feel like anything we're going to do, including, I mean, small things like the flagpoles tilted over sideways, there's a piece of Connecticut state flag that's tattered that's sitting on the end of it. We're going to pull those, reseat them, put nice flags on them. But, you know, we are a church. We don't have deep pockets, so we can't necessarily do everything at once. Thank, thank you, Pastor. the town staff. Uh, the, they meet the um, landscaping requirements that we normally have, and the other one, lights, are all right open in? I didn't look at that. There are uh, floodlights on the building. Uh, I was there during the daytime, so I'm not sure if they are uh, operational, but nevertheless, there are lights on the building that uh, I'm assuming they will right. take care of. Uh, in terms of the um, landscaping, I can't uh, say um, I didn't consider this the kind of project that we would have to revisit all the land because they're really not changing, you know, the parking layout. I mean, if they were making significant modifications, we would have probably opened up that issue. But um, they're basically reusing the pavement as it exists out there today. And you think that'll do for the next 10 years or something? Probably. Well, the I mean, you, you obviously noticed some, you know, pavement deterioration. So, um, and I'm, I'm sure uh, from a liability point of view, uh, the church themselves wants to take care of that, and they have testified to that effect. So if you want to cover that with a condition that, you know, uh, damaged pavement is repaired to the satisfaction of the uh, town engineer, that would probably cover that. If my fellow commission members want to do that, fine. Yeah. I think that's just, about it right now. Just a point of interest for me. Are, are you actually planning to operate the daycare yourself, or are you hiring a third party? No, we're going to operate it uh, as Lifeway Learning Center which is uh, part of Lifeway Church. Okay. All right. Yeah, two more things, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's a gate back there that you say, and that kind of protects the playground area, is that correct? And you're gonna continue? That's correct, so that state- You're gonna retain that. That's state required because it's approved uh, by daycare, and so that, those all have to be fenced in and segregated, those different okay. uh, play areas by age. Is there any concern with the disappearing lane on the Berlin Turnpike kind of disappearing right in front of your the common driveway with you in the next building up. I call it a disappearing lane, which well, it is. There was a DOT. What do, you, what do you call it, Mr. Chairman, you guys? 
it's, it's, a, it's, a it's, a, it's a climbing lane that's been eliminated, but the DOT made that change, so it's not in their purview to, yeah, to deal with it. So no. they're not about to go right. back and. Well, I mean, it's not in their it it's not in their purview to be doing anything with it, right? It, it doesn't present a problem to you, Phil. <coughs> yeah. When people are coming in for a service. I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. I'm done, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, assuming there are no additional questions from the public, could I have a motion? Oh, did you have some questions? Just one okay. quick question, which I guess probably doesn't really factor in, factor into our decision making, but. When you buy this, it will be tax exempt. Um, well, yeah, because okay. yeah, as a not-for-profit, we're a not-for-profit corporation with the state of Connecticut, and the daycare will fall under the not-for-profit use. We exist as a charitable, religious, and educational institute, so the daycare falls under educational. Right. Um, yeah. But we are, you know, again, helping 50 kids that would be displaced and 15 employees. Uh, so, yeah, I realize it would be obviously an economic impact to that, but uh, we think that we're also helping uh, by preserving this daycare, which would go out of business if we don't do this. The roof lead that's come on the building repair. You said you were done. Yeah, you Thank promised. You. No, I'm not done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> One more here. I changed well, and, my mind. Um, hey, you, you got to give me some consideration at my age. Come on, <laughs> be good. Uh, no, the, the roof lead is out back. I assume that they're, they're going to be replaced. They're kind of falling down. I, I, I assume I, that's going to be part of the renovation of the building. Part of the renovation is we we have a few roof issues we have to address. And that that falls, I think, under the building department of uh, how. We, like I said, I, I have an appointment with uh, uh, Steve Laterulo. Um, no. If we make it through tonight. Um, I'm supposed to contact him tomorrow and set up an appointment for next week to go through and find out what, what he's going to require us to do outside. Okay. And uh, that way there we can put a committee together to tackle it once we close on the building. And we have been told uh, by the Newington Building Department that they're willing to defer to Wethersfield. Uh, we, maybe we need to get that in writing, but I think that would make things clear, cleaner if we're working their state requirements for the building. They're not town requirements. so. Um, we would be happy to do that and just work with Steve on all the building stuff. Yeah, the codes are national codes. Yeah. Code. So, yeah, state is true. So, assuming there are no additional questions, I'll entertain a motion. motion. To close the hearing. Thank you. Second. All righty, we have a motion to close and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All righty. Entertain a motion. Make a motion we approve application 2006-19-Z um, with one, two stipulations. One, that um, the town engineer confirms that the responses from the applicant to the 10 items are adequate and they appear to be. And second, that uh, pavement be damaged pavement be repaired to the satisfaction of town staff. Second. Thank you, George. Thank you, Rich. Any discussion about that? That's what I was hearing, right? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Good luck. Thank you. Thank Good you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck. Welcome to town. Thank you. Two thirds. Two -thirds. Two -thirds. Welcome, <laughs> welcome two thirds of you to town. <laughs> <laughs> They should do the line in the building. Yeah. Hotel. That's good. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda. Ribbon cutting on the back. Is a request for extension. It's item 3.2. Application 1965-17-Z, a zone change and site plan approval. This is a request for extension. Is the applicant here? Yes. Hello again. Good to see you. Uh, Guy LaPlante, 170 Ridge Road. Uh, we're applying for uh, an extension to f file our mylars for our recent zone change approval. All right. So when were they due, Peter? And what is the new date? You're so you have a provision in your regulations, which is Section 10.1 D5B, which basically says that uh, a building permit. Um, uh, a project basically has to be under construction within a year of approval. Um, so um, 
here we are almost a year to the day. I think this was approved uh, in, on February 6th of last year, and here we are on February 5th. So uh, they've asked for an extension uh, to that um, uh, provision uh, to keep the project alive. They are um, now um, having worked almost to the end of the state process to acquire the property uh, or gearing up um, with the building plans, uh, but they want to keep that permit alive so that they can do that. Um, so I would think uh, an additional year is more than adequate I for you guys to start construction. Plenty. I think we're yep. trying to start construction. Uh, I know the loan will be closing in June, so probably October yep. of this so, year. Yeah, I would, I would think a year then would be. I make be. a motion, Mr. Chairman, to extend. Oh. Yeah, I, I, just I got a question. question. We got a couple for, questions. For the record, I take from your, your, your remarks, Peter, that uh, uh, granting the extension authority is within the prerogatives of the commission under the uh, regulation that you cited. It specifically authorizes the commission to grant extensions upon request, yep. Okay. Is there, is there a maximum period of extensions? I it would be coincident with the five-year, you know, site plan requirements, so another year, I think, um, you know, whether even, you know, it's probably a question as to whether that provision is even um, legal, but nevertheless, it's in your regulations. So in order to, uh, to act like it is. comply, yes, I, I'm, we're, <laughs> we're, I'm, I'm making believe it is. So just to be safe, in case someone uh, raised an issue, I've advised the applicant to request it and uh, it indicated to him it's almost an administrative uh, function, but nevertheless, we wanted it to be uh, formalized. So, so the hang-up is, is acquiring the property? Uh, th that was the uh, time-consuming part. And, and so you're still not expecting them to close until June or July? No, we're, we're finally done. So it's ours now. Oh, okay. We got to do a... Did, did you have to leave some to the state, uh, to DOT as well? You yeah, cut we, have off a, the corner? we have a DOT permit. No, they didn't want the little triangle. Oh, okay. I think we retained okay. that. Okay. But no, they just filed their paperwork a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago. So we, we've been working on it ever since. All right. Thanks. Dan? So, so at this point, you're just waiting on the state. Do you, do you see any difficulties as far as getting approvals no. to allow you to close? No. I, we, we're done. Yeah, they're not. No, they did close. That's yeah, what I was we're, just asking. Well, yeah. they, they're closed, right? We have our DOT permit all set for the <clears throat> lower, lower parking lot access. So it's really just getting a... The planning wrapped up and the building permits. So, so when you said July, what were you saying that you're going to be done by July? No, we're going to start construction. Okay, so you're still six months away from construction. Okay, yeah, but I you mean, own the building and, yeah. and you've got your permits. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Shall I make a motion? Yeah, George, make your motion. The three of them here, right? <laughs> all three have to. All three have to be. 1965-17Z, 19. 692-17-ES. It's just, uh, uh, it's just number, number, it's just that. number two, George. What's that? It's just number two. Just number two? Yep. Oh, okay. So it's uh, to uh, extend application number 1965-17-Z for yes. site plan and design review approval for one year. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All righty. Congratulations on closing anyways. Good luck. Thank Good luck. you. We'll be in soon with some uh, updated plans. Nice. All right. Thanks. Thank you. All righty. Uh, moving on to other business. We have today item 4.1, a pre-application review for Putnam Park, 100 Great Meadow. Welcome back. to stop showing up here. <laughs> Doesn't it usually go with the year? Uh, 17 is the year. They filed it at the end of 17. We approved it in the end of 18. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, Commission members. For the record, Kevin Johnson, uh, Close Jensen, and Miller. Uh, with me this evening is Mr. Christopher Henney, uh, owner of Putnam Park. Um, recently, I'm, I'm, well, I'm sure you're all aware of Putnam Park. And as Chris just mentioned, we've been here numerous times over the years for numerous projects. Um, some have come to fruition and others have not. Uh, most recently, Mr. Henney opened River, a uh, new uh, riverfront uh, restaurant and bar. Um, to complement this new riverfront experience, um, what Mr. Henney's planning on doing this spring is to construct the outdoor uh, dining and patio, which was approved. Uh, back in 2013, and that's in this area here. Uh, this here is the elevated deck, which is currently open. Uh, to further complement this new dining experience, uh, we created a master plan uh, of other amenities. Um, a 27 uh, slip marina, uh, event tent. <coughs> One is an event tent, the other is a wedding tent. Uh, the idea for the event tent is that, say, a corporation or a family or whatever entity wanted to have a gathering, partake of the restaurant experience and so forth, they could rent that tent. The larger tent would be a wedding tent. Um, this is an enlargement the division of that waterfront area. Um, again, this would be the event tent, the wedding tent, possibly a pool, a gazebo. Uh, there'd be some regrading. Uh, that lower grass terrace area would be removed, uh, replaced with hardscape. Uh, retaining walls, which would also function as seat walls, a uh, new stairway, the outdoor bar that would be constructed as part of the previously approved uh, outdoor dining experience, get a uh, pergola over that, uh, new handicapped access, and so forth. Um, the driveway will still go back there, though, the white Correct. Correct. Okay. Another amenity being proposed um, is a hotel. Um, having zeroed in on a room count yet. That would be constructed out in this area of the existing parking lot. Um, obviously, all these additional uses are going to generate additional parking demands. Construction of the hotel is going to result in a loss of parking. Um, so to offset all these new uses, Mr. Henney's been exploring with the state of Connecticut, the possibility of constructing a parking lot on the north side of the Putnam Bridge. Uh, there is an open area there. Uh, there are weapons between the two properties. Uh, there is floodplain. We haven't engineered anything yet. Again, this is all conceptual, master plan. Um, because this is a remote lot, if there are no sidewalks along Great Meadow Road. Again, these are wetlands. Um, I did have a concept of doing an elevated footpath through there to connect the two. Um, but with permitting and so forth, that's probably farther in the future. Um, so the pro Mr. Henny is also exploring to connect these two areas, the valet service, the parking. Um, so Probably a lot of employees would be going out there. I would imagine. Yes. Yeah. Right. That would make sense. Out there. That would make sense. So we've engaged a traffic engineer um, to do a traffic study of all the existing uses within the Putnam Park office building. And there's been a community space created that's available for rental, the office space, and when the hotel wedding events, the outdoor dining, the marina, and so forth. So we've engaged a traffic engineer to do a comprehensive traffic study, prepare a report. The 
existing Putnam Park currently has an OSA certificate for this property. So any new uses, square footage, additional parking, and so forth, that certificate would have to be updated. Um, the reason we're introducing this master plan, so to speak, that there's not a provision per se within the zoning regulations for approval of a master plan. The idea being what we wanted to explore with the commission is that you would entertain a submission of an application for a master plan with all these amenities, <coughs> new uses, with the caveat that every time a new use came on that we would submit a detailed site plan for approval. But if we could submit a master plan, gain approval on a master plan, we could then, traffic engineer could then, make one application to OSTA for one comprehensive certificate instead of every time an entity came online, such as a wedding tent. same process for an event tent or a hotel and so forth. The idea being, again, we create a master plan, gain approval for that, go to OSTA with that approval, come back individually for site plan approval with the condition that everything fits within what was approved in the master plan. You certainly wouldn't be coming seeking approval for a 125-room hotel and then trying to sneak in 200 rooms. It would all have to fit within uh, you know, the footprint of the master plan. So really that's our purpose this evening, is to introduce the vision for this property, um, to see if you would entertain a formal application. We're not seeking any approvals tonight, um, but if you would entertain a formal application for a master plan, um, as such, we would want to know what you would want as far as detailed plans at that point. Obviously, we would provide parking square footage, hotel rooms, and so forth, but whatever else you would want to see, zoning would obviously be included. Um, but at that stage, we wouldn't necessarily be prepared, you know, with detailed drainage and, you know, pavement designs and so forth. But we're just wondering if you would entertain a master plan and what you would want for plan content. So, you know, actually, I'm, I'm trying to equate the whole OSTA process in my head is, you know, because I've certainly seen OSTA um, approvals for the big plan, right? And then they come in and they get smaller pieces of it and you get phased, phased through. And it just never dawned on me that OSTA probably can't give those big plan approvals without the planning and zoning, just like they do on every smallest. Correct. So... so yeah. Versus so coming back again, as I mentioned, with every entity, then it's another application for OSTA to just keep issuing a new certificate and update. So, so you think OSTA will give you an OSA certificate based on approval of some master plan rather than planning and zoning approval for site plan? Is it that's, or have you actually had the conversation with OSTA that they will no, do that? Well, Yeah, but but I guess I think of this master plan. You know, it's a, it's just exactly that. It's just a plan, right? Um, for instance, when when we give you a hard site plan approval, I would expect to see the deed from the Department of Transportation for that whole darn parking lot, right? But that's not obviously going to get done as part of this process, right? So how would OSTA give you one? Yes, how would OSTA give you an approval that requires you to have something? You know, well, again, Mr. Penny, the master plan will be more specific than what we've got today. Right. Well, again, that's why we're looking to see what level of detail, what you want for plans and so forth, you know. Well, and commit, commitments on property you don't own. Right. Well, again, Mr. Henney's been exploring 
back with the state. Um, we're just in the beginning stages. Mm, okay. okay. We wouldn't be looking to buy that land to lease it. I would. I uh, right. Lease it. DOT wouldn't give it to you either. You, no. you do be no, able. They're, they're, we know they're not. <clears throat> Right, and they're going to kick you off when they need to reconstruct it, <laughs> when they need to paint the bridge. <laughs> um, put, put in the bike ramp. Well, the, that goes. That's on the, the other side. That's on the other side. Other side. <clears throat> well, we did it's, layer in um, that parking that was from the Clock Harbor yeah. uh, study, and, and the access to that bike ramp would be right here. On the other side, yeah. All right, it's just on the south side of the bridge. You have something. Yeah, it was a long time ago, but we did this once before, when back in uh, 1985, as we were completing the building, when uh, uh, at that point IBM came to us and said that they wanted to occupy the building, but they wanted another 70,000 square feet. And so we redesigned the building so that we could put another 70,000 square feet in front of it, coming out of the second, basically there'd be a, a skywalk between the... Uh, the second story of the existing building and then the new addition for IBM. And at that point, we were walking down the, uh, the road with the DOT for land over there for additional parking. Granted, it was a, a thousand years ago, but uh, mm. they, were, uh, they were amenable to, to it then. Mm. And then, of course, IBM moved the, uh, the entire unit to Chicago, so that's the end of that. Peter, could you explain what zoning district this is in and exactly what types of approvals are needed for the types of uses they're talking about? Specifically, do you need special permit or special exception approval for those uses? So the, the building is in the business park zone. The off-site parking is in the agricultural zone, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, so they're in different zones. Um, we do have provisions f for, you know, off-site parking, so there is some language to that effect. The, uh, the hotel in the business park zone is permitted by, I think, special permit, but let me find that. By special permit. Um, the marina is the uh, the wrinkle right now. We have uh, no provisions in the business park zone. We do in the agricultural zone, but not in the business park zone, um, specifically for the marina. Uh, so Mr. Henney's attorney and I have been talking about that. He may be uh, required to come in uh, for an amendment to the regulations to allow the marina. Obviously, that would have to happen before they could actually apply for any uh, permits. So I think that breaks down the three material um, aspects of, of the project. Uh, so special permit for the hotel, uh, the parking um, off-site parking is permitted in the agricultural zone, but so we, we would just have to look at how that relates to the parking requirements. And then um, the waterfront uh, activity would, um, in theory, part of it be accessory to the marina and part of it accessory to the, um, you know, the, the office building. So would some of those, you know, would the, would the events or events with food and alcohol require a special permit as well? So if, if you remember, um, you did approve the outdoor patio and the um, general outside space for the tent that went with the restaurant as an accessory use. Um, so that was previously permitted as a accessory uses. They're now talking about, you know, adding a pool, which kind of goes with the marina mostly. Um, and then some additional outside space that would be accessory uh, to both the marina and and the restaurant. And, and do the do the regulations allow you to meet your parking requirements off lot presently when you're in this zone? We we do um, distance requirement. No, there's no specific provision like that. Um, as I said, there's some flexibility in the parking uh, regulations. We'd have to, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's and make sure all of this works in concert with that. So, um, certainly a unique. Would you want to see a sidewalk, even though they do plan to have a service? Yeah, those are things we would all have to we would have to look at. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, you know. So, um, 
How about DEEP? Are we talking? Yeah, you're talking about you know DEEP and um, I believe the Army Corps of Engineers yeah, for yeah. the Marina. Right. So, where's the yeah. channel there? Uh, yeah. Where's the channel out there? Where the water is? Channel? No, <laughs> where, where the, the blue giant is? blue part. Yeah. I believe it's somewhere <laughs> right in here. Um, where? Sorry, sorry again. I believe it's right about oh. right here. The, the plans for the marina have actually been drawn by a, a marine engineer. They, they did oh, okay. Um, they so we've been talking about Oh, yeah. No, they, okay. they did a river that survey. But I, I want to say it's right about in here. Well, it, yeah, it's dotted lines on on this one. Is that right? This river is crazy oh, down yeah. there. I see it, yeah. The river, the depths change so rapidly. That right. The, right. I guess. I mean, and the level changes, too. Oh, the whole river changes over the years, so it's... <laughs> Back to what they're talking about, I guess my, my question is really if we're talking about a use that requires a special permit, then I guess I'm, I'm not, and, and we don't have a provision, this is not a floating zone or some other kind of zone where there's a formal master plan process. So it sounds to me like you would need a special permit to have even the ability to go forward with a hotel and to have a special permit, we'd need to see a whole bunch of detail in terms of how it's going to work and what the impacts are going to be, et cetera. And then ultimately all of that would have a duration that could only go so far if it doesn't get done. But it, it sounds like you'd need an actual special permit approval. And then as part of the special permit approval, doesn't it normally require a site plan? Yeah, it, it does require a site plan. There, uh, there's no, um, as Kevin mentioned at the beginning, no specific provisions in here for uh, a master plan. There's some language in the regulations about phasing um, and how you would work that out. But normally the phasing plan, you know, is has phasing lines, but the details are all laid out. Um, so there's probably a level of detail here um, you know that would be uh warranted for you guys to have a comfort level you know with even a master plan so i i, I guess that's really the question you're asking kevin um how far right would you want to see as part of a formal master plan application have you talked to each other enough to get a feel where you know you know what the detail might want to be um, we haven't gotten into the details yet because they're not quite there. I don't think you're, are you at the details for the hotel um, or is that that's still uh, moving? No, no, I'm, we're still working yeah. our way through right. precisely what that's going to look like yeah. as far as number of keys, that kind of thing. Right. So, yeah, I think even if they wanted, even if you wanted the details, they're not even at that point to, to provide that detail. Um, although... You know, it, it, they're going to utilize the existing parking lot, so um, you know th that's pretty. That's a that's a known you know known entity, um, and you're going to be pretty far along on the details for the waterfront and for the marina. So th there's going to be a high level of detail for that. Yeah, um, you want something tonight? No, no, no. no, no, no. We're not looking for any no, okay. Tonight. Huh. We're just no, he's just looking for like is, a just path. Looking for feedback. Mm. Pass forward. Yeah. Yep. You're just hearing, okay. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I introduce the concept and, and receive any feedback level of detail that you would require at the level of a master plan. I mean, where we are right now, the the plans for the marina are really in pretty good shape. Um, the hotel is still in a conceptual stage because we're we're looking at um, different possibilities. We're looking at whether it's going to be courtyard type facility or a residence inn or maybe even dual branded where you do both a courtyard and a residence inn. So we're, we're still, I mean, we'd, we'd like to do a Marriott product um, and that's the path that we're taking, but that requires some exploration. The, the marina on the other hand, I mean, I, I don't know how much more she really has to do. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure what level she's at. She has, this, this is, um, it's been submitted to DEEP, yes. Right. It's been submitted to DEEP, and I believe it's made its way to, uh, I forget the entity's name in town, for both the ramps. And uh, 
it's now the Park and Recreation Board. Yep. I had a question yeah. on the arena. Is people are real launch boats here? Were they? I mean, I don't. I don't understand. Is it? Is it a marina in the sense that people will lease? Um, you know, release from you to use it. Uh, if I have a boat, can I lease it six months from you? Yes. Okay, so then you're gonna have to supply parking for the boats too. That's why I was looking through the parking thing. There's there's no parking requirements for the boat. If someone par comes down parks for, to go on their boat, you have to have a parking place for it. That's the one thing that I thought was missing. Yeah, I know. Just, I'm just saying, there's no parking for the boats, boat users. But you're correct. If, if there's 27 slips and 20 or a long-term lease, yeah. the, again, that's all part of our traffic okay. impact okay. and shared use study that Mark's going to be working on. But but does it have does it have launching capabilities? That was another. No, question. I, I didn't know. Right, right. So there's no boat. Yeah, so there's to go no to trailers yeah. or anything. Yeah, there's no boat. Big, I thought I was just looking for the overflow of people using their boats on the weekends with the hotel being packed and the, you know, the weddings going on. I just thought that you need parking for the boats. No, you need parking for boats. I mean, I'm manager, one of the managers of a family marina, and we have, frankly, our biggest problem is parking. <laughs> because, you know, for any given boat, you know, there, there can be up to four cars mm -hmm. on a weekend. Uh, depending on how many people want to go for a ride and show up and so forth. So um, I was just curious what what the amenities were and what the, what the goal was, whether it was just, you know, kind of a dock and dine sort of thing or whether it was going to be an actual marina and what what other amenities, if any, were going to be provided there. No, we're going to be providing showers and restrooms. The pool is largely for the marina. Mm -hmm. You know, pump out? So the I believe pump so. Pump out. Yeah, I think we have to. I think right. that's one of the requirements. Didn't right. she say that that was one of the requirements of Dean? I believe that's correct. No have problem. fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but what are you envisioning in terms of the number of people who would attend an event under either of the two tents? What would the capacity be? I think you're looking at about 150 for the wedding and 100 in the event. Or 75, probably 80 that kind of thing. Um, but the nice part is that uh, all of these uses are really complementary in the sense that mm -hmm. when the hotel and the event and the tents are being used, the office building's empty. Because for the most part, that's going to be either at night or on the weekends. Um, so that's why it works. The, and, and the synergy that's, that's created between the the hotel and the office building are obvious. I mean, that's that that works well. But the whole key is that because they all use, they have different peak demands for parking. Um, we think it all hangs together for that reason. Um, we would like to have that. Obviously, we need the additional parking um, just by, to allow us to build what we want to be able to. You also said to me today when I went down to see you as a look at things, uh, you mentioned that the hotel would, that the building, your existing building, would provide space for meetings and that kind of thing and not much in the hotel. That's it. We want to try and limit the hotel because we don't want to spend the money building it. Yeah. We've, got the, we've got all those amenities already in Putnam Park. Exactly. How many stories are you contemplating for the hotel? It, I, I don't even know yet. We, we haven't gotten that far. So, no, Kevin, you're Kev Kevin, you're trying to find this path forward primarily to satisfy OSTA. Is that? Well, we, we were hoping if we had, we could, we could just do one submission, one overall approval, and then as everything amenities came online, it all falls within the framework of that one permit. Although, otherwise, the worst case scenario is we keep going back to OSTA every time. And what, what is the, the hardship in, in doing that? Is that you have to do a new traffic analysis? Wouldn't some of those changes possibly be under a yeah, threshold of being considered we significant? We have to do a, a whole new traffic study, but it's just going through the entire process. 
So I think I understood why Joe uh, was taking the path where he was, I think he was suggesting that he was going to have difficulty saying a, um, a master plan was going to work just because there's a special permit for the, for the hotel. I, I mean, I, I get that. Um, on the other hand, a, a special permit is a decision-making tool for us. Is there any reason to think that if we said, you know, master plan looks generally okay with me at some level way up here, that we couldn't say no at a formal um, special permit hearing process later? I, I, I think that starts to get a little bit complicated because then without a procedural vehicle even called the master plan, we're giving advice and opinion and then two years later when somebody comes in and if we do say no, I think it's fodder for, uh, you know, for, for challenge, frankly. Yeah, because, I mean, at that point, all we would have would be site plan review, and it's like, you know, did you put enough shrubs in here or not? Have we changed our mind on whether this is a good idea? And, and, and beyond that, I guess, if to the, and to the extent you're just sort of having a concept that isn't even a permit of any kind, and they're still coming in on the special permit, I think it could still get complicated, because if you deny the special permit on the basis of traffic or whatever the case may be or the building is too tall and out of character somebody could say but hey you approved my my master plan you can't you, know, you can't say no now which is, so, I'm, so i'm just struggling with given the kinds of things they're talking about and, and wanting to ensure we understand you know what the potential impacts can be how do you how do you go how do we go forward without a full book of information to understand exactly what we're dealing with and what we're being asked to do how about if we had, uh, just look at it from this perspective, what if we had a provision in the regulations that spelled out some standards for approving a master plan and phased approval? Is there, do you guys have concerns about going forward in that way if we had the, um, you know, authority to do something like that, you know, conceptually? Um, how long would that take? Okay. How long would it take to change the regulations? Uh, Probably a couple couple months. Um, yeah. So the language would obviously have the, you know, hold harmless type of a have, have common, and, and have minimum requirements, and you know, spell out you know a, uh, you know, a, a, at least some parameters. Um, and, and probably the first phase would be probably fully designed because they've got it. They're going forward with this marina uh, right away. And then the other phases would be identified and then subject to further refinement in it before they could be built. They have to come back in again for some, you know, an amendment to a, per I don't know how it would be formulated in the regulations, maybe an amendment to the permit or and something like that. So, you know. If you consider doing that to the regs though, Peter, then what, what zoning districts are you doing it for? What uses and what's the rationale on doing it on one and not for every commercial zone in town? And do we want to start going down that road as well. I mean, I just think it's something to consider on that front. Yeah, I think, you know, it would probably be specific to this zone because it's in this applicant's, you know, th this applicant would be working towards that amendment. Um, whether it has a... i with tying things up for them. Uh, we don't want to do too much of that. What do you mean tying things up well, too much for them? new regulation and going through that aspect of it and maybe taking three to four months or something. Well, it's, it's going to take them a long time to get the permitting for the marina. We're not, I mean, the, the couple of months that we might take to craft a regulation which allows them a path forward, I think, is a uh, time well spent it's given the, the way to yeah. Do it. And I think you're going to have to come back with a regulation amendment for the marina anyway. So 
um, and that'll take a certain amount of time. So I was just posing the question to see if anyone had any strong opposition, um, you know, to the applicant coming in with a master plan regulatory scheme uh, that they could then come in with. Um, obviously, you can't predetermine what, you know, that regulation amendment might actually say, but um, it would certainly give you some authority uh, to consider a concept like this um, in some fashion much more um, you know, specifically than we have today. Because, um, you know, Joe raises legitimate uh, concerns about not having the authority now to consider something like this. I would hate these guys to go off and go down that road, assuming that, and then come back in and, you know, we struggle with it, um, you know, two or three months from now when we could have spent that time coming up with some sort of scheme. But one, I guess one thing I would add is if you're considering that, you know, it, it seems like the two ways to go are one, something that says, you know, this master plan is non-binding and the commission is not bound to do anything down the road, which if it's disclaimed to that degree may well be useless to them. Right. To them. Right. And if you're not going to say that, and again, I have concerns even about saying that <laughs> and not getting stuck right. with it, but if you do instead use it as the functional equivalent of a special permit or the first step to that, you know, then I think you really need to see all the bells and whistles and details of what's being proposed and traffic counts and what buildings look like and where they are and how tall they are in order to be able to be able to evaluate whether they should be getting that first stage approval. So those no. are kind of the two ends of the spectrum, it seems to me. No, I, I agree. I mean, and, and I guess, you know, just to kind of step back, I mean, all of the things that you're talking about, I think, are desirable things and, you know, clearly deserve complete consideration. And, you know, if you can make it work, that'd be great. I, I just, you know, have concerns about the, the process, you know, because, you know, it's one of the, one of the things that's generally a knock on Connecticut and New England as well. This is the way we've always done it. I mean, you know, that there are undoubtedly better ways to do everything that we do. It's just, you know, we have to get comfortable that the better way to do it or the other way to do it that you're proposing is something that, you know, at some point we get the chance to micromanage it as opposed to, you know, having something sort of thrown in front of us you know, here, this is what we're going to OSTA with. And then, you know, a year from now, all we can do is count the bushes in the parking lot. Kevin, I think it would be helpful to hear from OSTA as to what what level of detail they would also need to see so that it's parallel to whatever we maybe talk about in the future going forward. Um, I don't think I, you haven't had that. No, I don't think Mark has talked. Okay. So that, I think that would be helpful too, so that we don't spin our wheels, come up with something, and then find out that at the end of the day they're not going to. We'll yeah, yeah. I think that would be a good starting point, uh, maybe to frame this whole thing. Um, so just something I'd like to add as well. I've actually reviewed several master plans, and I reviewed them for Asta. Asta. We used to call them the STC. One was for um, ESPN had master plan, if you can imagine, they had all these kinds of buildings and daycare center across the street and this and that. And the other one was for Quinnipiac University, where they were they knew that they were expanding their campuses. So you'd look at the master plan, and over time, over phases, you'd receive more bits and pieces of this plan. And I found it very a very good process. That's because I, it sounds to me like you've already put a lot of thought, you have an idea roughly of what you want to put in this park. You've actually thought about the parking, valet parking. So if you already have that idea, if you already have that vision, why not share that information with us, which is what you're doing tonight, right? So it's, it's difficult to say how much detail we need. But I would think, you know, as, as our commissioner members are saying, I mean, you need to give us some information to make a good decision. Now, I'm hearing that you're already doing your slips, 
the, the marina work. You're already getting that done. So that sounds to me like that's the first part of your submission. <clears throat> Once you submit your master plan, is that how it would be? You'd have a master plan and then eventually the, your first piece would be your, your marina that you'd be submitting for review? Possibly under the master okay. plan. Okay, that would be part of the master the plan. The outdoor dining and the wedding tent, Mr. Henney's hoping to construct. Soon. And, oh, okay. The, the yeah, that would okay. Be so, take two years. so I'm just thinking if if you're I would I picture a report. Part of it is a narrative, so that you, everyone has an idea of where what's coming down the pike. What do you envision? And that to be documented, not just in a plan, but but documented. And and I think too that. You know, there's an, when you're looking at the bigger picture, there's nothing wrong with making comments about potential concerns about parking in a different location or, or what the traffic movement is going to be because it's the overall site. It's one owner, right? So that just makes it an easier thing to review. But that's just my two cents is that it, to me it just seems that it's actually easier if it is the master plan because otherwise, you're looking at little bits and pieces over time, and you actually may miss something that way. Well, that's what's been occurring over the last several years. We come in with bits and pieces with no clear vision as to where we're going, which now we're trying to lay that vision out. And unfortunately, I think this is my fault because when they came in with the marina, I said, well, I want to see what you're doing on the landward side, how it relates to the approvals that we gave for the outside dining and then so um you know then it started and then the hotel has been discussed chris and i have been talking about the hotel for a couple of years so you know that's been off on the horizon so we said well let's see how that factors in then it opened it up you know the off-site parking with the pedestrian bridge so um well and then then just one more thing is that off-site parking i'm seeing a non-access line right around where you're proposing the off-site parking so you're you're outside the, the non-access line is that where you're do you see the, isn't there like a that curve yeah what is that isn't that the non-access line that, that's the non-access line right everything down here is dot land so right so so when you've had is that like an amusement park i'm not sure it makes much of a difference but I don't know. I just think of non-access line. It means stay out. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. So, <laughs> so <laughs> okay. We realize that. Okay. So I know you've you've started your conversations with with DOT or the rights away division. So I don't know if that came up at all. And I don't know, Tom, if you have a better understanding of. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. But I, I just that's the thing that troubles me. The non-access line that it may you may not be able to go in there. That's what I'm saying. I know. We won't know until we explore it. Have to go to DOT land to find that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I guess I, I challenged, <laughs> I challenged Joe. I'm going to challenge you now. So we're considering this. Um, you're asking this so that you don't have to go to OSTA more than once. But how many times are you really going to have to go to OSTA? So and and I ask that in this context. When I think of the marina, and the parking that you have, you probably have enough. You only get into the second off-site parking needs when you start talking about a hotel that takes away your parking. And if that's the case, how many OSTA processes do you have to go through anyways? You do it without the hotel, and someday in the future you do it with a hotel. Yeah. Yes, I mean, no? Again, it, it all depends how these entities come online and, and what, when, or versus when. Well, so, so, it could be two or three, maybe four. You think we, we just thought it would be cleaner. The idea that the, the idea to show a vision, right? I'm, I'm with you. I'm and with that's you. all. You know, we're just exploring the possibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, our purpose was to generate discussion. So. The OSTA, uh, the the additional OSTA reviews are triggered by the addition of more parking or more activities that theoretically could well, generate. Right now, there's a certificate for X square feet, X number of parking spaces. Okay. So But if you didn't add square footage or parking spaces, would you have to go back to them? If we 
If you didn't add square footage to the... Okay, so the uses such as the marina. Okay. So I was trying to support what Tom was saying. If if the addition of the off-site parking lot is the only thing that triggers you going back to OSTA. No. No, okay. No. So, so you'll, you'll have to go to OSTA when you do the event tent? Yeah. Okay. You, you wouldn't make a case that the event tent that is off-peak? Off yeah. It doesn't require more parking? I, you know, I can honestly say I don't know 100% exactly what OSTA makes you come back for. That's why I'm asking the question. Yeah, I wonder if you guess can if they sort of argue that commit it's going to be then not, I not during that. Huh. Well, you'll never oh, use yeah. the event tent during the day, during yeah. the week. Yeah. The marina, yeah. You got, I think I can understand that. You know, it's full-time usage. <clears throat> Yeah, and a lot of people, if you're going to buddy with a boat, three or four of you cars are showing up to get on, you know, so. So I don't, I don't know if we came to any long, definitive long, path long. here, right? There's options. There's us, us taking action to, to con, you know, consider in the future some zone, change the regulations, I, I, not zoning changes necessarily, but regulation changes that would allow us and at what level of detail do we want to allow a master plan concept you're going to go back and try and find out whether master plan concept what level of detail would OSTA require in order to get you there I mean I know it's I, I think I think I understand that it's legislative that they need to have local approval before they can give you approval right but local approval of what may be somewhat fuzzy mm. right. can you have a draft of that for the next meeting I don't think it's his job. No, I think I would work with these guys because obviously whatever we, you know, is in the regulations they'd want to be comfortable with. So I, uh, you guys may end up being the, well. We can talk about that. You whether you or the town, uh, I can pose the question to, you know, other towns and see. You know, it sounds like maybe Hamden and I was going to say so Quinnipiac would be a state would be a state. No, no, they're, the they're state private. School. So they exempt. ESPN was private. So that's where I'm getting at. Right? So some Bristol. of the governments would be exempt. From right. The local. Bristol. What was the other one? Quint Wait, Bristol. 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 ESPN was Bristol. Okay. So ESPN. Yeah, I can reach out to a few towns and see who has um, regulations, and we can start at least start that research and see how involved and what level of detail. Yeah. Yeah. Button. Yeah. Put, uh, Buckland. Buckland Hill. Walker. South yeah. Windsor. So yeah. Okay. So that's three or four right there that we can. See how complicated this is going to be. Okay. Thank you very much. At least now you have a vision where we're headed. <laughs> I went out there. Up the river. Near, near the river. The line is drawn here with a parking lot. It's like a moonscape out there. It's a bike. It goes down about 80 feet. They did anything and everything out there. So uh, we are going to move on to a discussion 4.2. Uh, some changes, potential changes, breweries to the zoning rights. But before we do, um, are you gentlemen interested in saying or addressing us in any manner? Okay. On what? On anything. On anything, you know. They've been quietly sitting here. I'm here just to uh, just to sit out and there have been two a meeting and I uh, plan on submitting an application in, in the next few weeks. Okay. So I'm here to just kind of run the process and, and wear, wear, wear that coat and you'll, you know, Things are yeah, a lot no. smoother. <laughs> you you literally just got my vote. <laughs> <laughs> if you added a Red Sox cap, you, you, that might be the automatic home run. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Greatest application of all time. <laughs> <laughs> the goat of applications. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can come back six times, but on the seventh. Mm. All right. So 4.2 is discussion of the zoning regs for breweries. So you have in your... Um, Packets uh, dated January 9th of 2019, a memorandum that was prepared um, for the record by Evan King, who is our planning uh, intern. Um, I tasked him with uh, researching uh, different towns, uh, 
different uh, standards for uh, how breweries are regulated, um, not just here in Connecticut, primarily in Connecticut, but also uh, maybe at a at a broader level. I think he has some Connecticut APA uh, regulations. So um, the reason for that is we have, uh, or I have been approached by an individual who is um, interested in uh, potentially uh, establishing a uh, brewery where he uh, obviously would brew uh, the beer on site, but he would also uh, want to have the ability to uh, distribute it as well as sell it uh, on site uh, at retail. So he would be doing three different things um, at one location. Uh, right now, we do not have regulations uh, that address this. Um, this is a huge uh, trend in Connecticut. I think we're one of the few towns that don't have one. Um, so I'm kind of taking this personally. You know, we need to keep up with the, <laughs> with the Joneses. Um, so he did provide you with uh, some excerpts from the statutes uh, and some regulations from uh, various towns. The uh, approaches, uh, uh, as we usually find uh, in our surrounding towns, are all over the place. Some have allowed them without having specific language. Those are few and far between. Others have uh, adopted uh, regulations and copies of those are in your packet. I think most recently, and I don't think it's in here, is East Hartford, maybe last week or the week before that, also uh, adopted some regulations uh, to allow um, allow uh, breweries and, and brew pubs. Um, so I wanted to provide you with this information, get, a, get any kind of uh, feedback I could as to whether there's any strong feelings uh, for or against this. We would um, uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, I haven't really worked this out with the applicant. I, I'm not sure whether he would uh, propose these regulations or uh, the town would um, propose them, but I wanted to try and um, pave the way a little bit, if at all possible, for anyone's particular uh, thoughts uh, about it. Um, this individual, I think, has zeroed in on a particular site. Um, so we would have to talk to him about whether the regulations might apply to more than one uh, zone in town. Um, the one wrinkle with um, with these types of uses um, are that a lot of them uh, stay away from um, preparation of food and providing that as their responsibilities and bring in uh, food food trucks, carts, or other vendors to provide that uh, on site. Um, if you've been to um, let's say two roads brewery uh, they usually have two trucks outside on a i think mostly on the weekend during the week i don't think they when, when it's not that busy they may or may not do that but um, this individual uh, would not um, be interested in preparing food um, so he might be interested in um, a food uh, truck or two to be available on site uh, we have approved um, on-site food trucks carts in other zones, so I don't know that we would necessarily have to create regulations for that because we have the past practice of allowing them by special permit, I think. Um, so that may or may not, but but that probably would be part of of, of this type of application if we were to, uh, to go forward with it. So that's the only, uh, most of the towns are only allowing them by special permit, so we would probably follow that uh, model as well. Uh, I have not found that these uses tend to generate much in the way of um, odor or noise or anything like that. Uh, this gentleman is not interested in, you know, entertainment and, you know, that kind of thing, um, which could generate noise, so he's not interested in doing that. Um, just trying to think of what some of the other highlights are as it relates to this use, but... Um, there be any outdoor aspect? There might be outdoor, um, yeah, that is a potential. He might want to do outdoor seating for the warm, warmer part of the year, um, which could be, uh, could generate um, some impacts to surrounding properties. Um, Peter, I think, I think you want to, I wrote here twice, <coughs> similar location, but some distance from residential. It could be only one house lot. I mean, I don't think these are serious odors and stuff. And no, they can be controlled, I'm yeah. sure, and yeah. so, uh, for the most part. And and I would talk a little bit more with, the, if you already haven't, a Derby 
planning staff because that's mentioned in here that they had an issue and uh, on a, right next to a residential zone. Right? Yeah, that was in a that was in a. Did, is there is it right on top of it? Was it like a medical marijuana proposal, which had a house right above it, you know, and that kind of stuff? Or what? Yeah, the one in Derby, I think, was a pre-existing non-conforming use in a surrounded by residential, and it wasn't a residential property. So it's kind of a different situation. This would be, um, you know, for commercial, obviously for commercial so properties. That out that right. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I think commercial zones make, of yep. course, decent sense. I both, both commercial and industrial. I don't see, and you've gone through it well here. I'd also think that you'd want to have, uh, if you want this kind of business to to grow and develop, you want to give it some flexibility relative to, you know, their their. Their food distribution, not a restaurant business, but you know, in addition to you know, perhaps uh, permitting food trucks, you'd also have possibly permitting catered food to, to be utilized should that uh, individual or business or subsequent businesses want it. But it, this is a burgeoning field. I, I can recall a little bit of the uh, history. Back in my lifetime, in, in the 70s, you had around, I think there were only about three or four brewers in the entire United States that had a significant, any significant market share, and there were very few smaller brewers left from, from the Depression era. Uh, now there are over 40,000 breweries, you know, uh, small breweries of, of this type that, are, uh, that have been established in the United States. And one of them has actually grown to become, uh, I think, you know, n number three in terms of size, and that's the Sierra Brewer Company out in the West Coast. So state have to approve these? I take it. Um, there's, there's a state licensing uh, process, yes, um, depending on the type of right. Tom, facility. how do you feel about uh, the food truck issue? Because you've had a lot of experience with, in New Haven with it, haven't you? Uh, yeah, it, it, you'd look at it as essentially a, as a regulated industry for purposes primarily of, of, of both traffic and traffic, pedestrian safety, and food safety. So, so it's a, and, and it's much more of a health issue than anything else. Okay. So you don't see any problem with allowing them no. into these? And, and Not, we no. already regulate the food trucks, you say, too. So. Yeah, it would be part of the process. Whether either it's part of it or they could come in after it, the food part of it is not the the bigger issue. It, you know, all of the commercial zones allow some type of restaurant uh, activity, so that's already provided in uh, most of the commercial zones in your regulations. So, um. yeah, I don't see it as that 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 big of a deal. No. It just as a, you know, it's it's a, another avenue for commercial development within within the town. Yeah, I mean, my, my two cents is that I would support either breweries or brew pubs as a special permit use in our more intense commercial zones. Yep. Interesting. One of them, Manchester, has it a permitted use in a historical district. Yeah, well, they add um, yeah, this particular um, mm. individual, although he doesn't want to do it in Old Weathersfield, was looking in Old Weathersfield because he thought it would be just a great mix and add to the... The whole atmosphere down there, but um, Makes some sense. you need high ceilings. You need, you know, you need certain for the brewing brewing part of it. So, um, but that was going through my mind. Do we allow it in all the commercial areas, industrial areas, and then not in all of this one? Yeah, we'd have to. We'd have I, to. I think maybe you should. Well, this this may be this may be initiated by an individual rather than by me. So I, you know, that I think that remains remains to be seen as to how we uh, would right. would propose it. Yeah, but you don't have for more than him. You never know it could be. Yeah, we would have we would, yeah we would have some input on that. So um, we have to think about that. You know, in Old Weathersfield, for example, the property that comes to my mind that may be somewhat ideal for establishing a brewery is the Comstock Ferry property. You know, if if that becomes, you know, uh, if that run if its current operations run into economic difficulties, they may be. An opportunity for a brew pub 
within the context of, of that side. Except for the property owner's um, That's right. background and uh, yeah. might have a problem with that. So, uh, yeah. But, okay. I think I, uh, I've got some guidance uh, on this to pass on and um, we can um, see what might happen in the next uh, few months. All right. Very good. Are we moving on to minutes? Was there anything else? <clears throat> if not, yeah, yeah under uh, correspondence when we get yeah, to we got the under correspondence. Lucky lose. Yeah, lucky lose. All right. Okay. Minutes, January 15th. Motion to approve. Second. Any, any uh, critiques? Edits? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those were perfect minutes. They almost always are. Yes, yes. that's true. But these really were. I thought they always are. <laughs> I couldn't even find one letter wrong. Good God. All righty. Uh, correspondence. Perfect vision and sound. So I, you have in uh, your packet uh, two uh, pieces of correspondence from perfect vision and sound. The first uh, dated 11-19 of 2018. Uh, Perfect vision and sound to attorney T.J. Donahue in regards to um, sound readings uh, at Lucky Luce at 222 Main Street. And then you have uh, on uh, January 10th of 2019, additional correspondence from perfect vision and sound to attorney T.J. Donahue, uh, once again referring to sound uh, at Lucky Luce and some uh, suggestions for sound blocking um, provisions. Uh, I had um, expected this correspondence uh, several months ago. Um, I didn't get the 1119 correspondence until Thursday or Friday of last week, uh, just so you're clear on that. And then obviously got uh, the uh, January 10th uh, correspondence last week uh, as well. So it had been uh, quiet on this particular issue um, since the readings were taken Back in the fall, uh, I think that was back on October 16th. Yes, October 16th, the readings were taken uh, in an effort to try and resolve uh, the concerns from the neighbor. Um, so here we are. The attorney representing the neighbor is um, requesting a uh, some follow-up with the commission now that this information has been uh, provided uh, to you. Um, I have not heard from... Uh, Lucky Lou or his attorney uh, since these uh, this correspondence was provided to them last week so I'm not sure uh, how they are preparing uh, to respond um, so I want to pose the question to you as to how you would like to go forward does this Commission uh, feel that they need to be involved uh, do you want this to be dealt with at a staff level to see if we can revolve it resolve it to the satisfaction of the neighbor um, so I uh, just I'd, I'd love you to be able to resolve it yeah, right. if, if you're that's willing to take feeling. yeah if you're willing okay. to take I that ball for yeah I'm I that's why I'm posing the question as I say we have not uh, followed up with the uh, uh, with the restaurant proprietor uh, in response to this to see what their position is and whether they would abide by the recommendations of their sound um, uh, I, so all I'm the curtains and stuff that he mentions in here you know I go you know, <laughs> really? It's a rather involved. I really story. wasn't that. Sound attenuation issues are pretty complex. Yeah. And get involved. Mm. From my own experience. He put up. We put up when we did the testing. He put up a tarp behind the sound device, the the noise uh, generating device, um, for a short period of time. It wasn't that involved. I mean, if he's going to do something on a more permanent basis or something that goes up and down, yeah, it'll be more. It'll have to be more structurally thought out, but I don't. You think that's really the way you're going to go? That's what their sound guy is su suggesting. Aesthetics good. are different. I think you'd leave the aesthetics up to Lucky Lou as to what aesthetic he wants to use. It would provide a nice backdrop for the band. Um, they could hang, you know, their logo and band name behind it. It provides a backdrop that you find on most stages anyway. So uh, You lose the view of all the cars. Yeah. Right. You that's project the on it. That's the right. I'm, I'm more concerned. Shadow, shadow puppets. You could do shadow puppets. I mean, the, the opportunities are endless. 
But this is the only, you know, the only engineer, you know, only engineered plan that we've seen for dealing with this issue. That's true, Tom. Yeah, I mean, and, and yeah, you know, it's done by, you know, a, you know, a, 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 I guess a recognized sound Most engineer. If Lucky Luz wants to come in with an alternate that has as good of credentials back in as this, fine. But uh, in this case, you know, the, that's that's one fact. It's the it's the you know the one report we have of a, of uh, of an engineer's recommendations. And number two, all the readings that he did take showed it above the you know the the levels that are permitted under. You know, our, our regulations. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with, with Tom's assessment. I mean, we've been kind of looking for some professional guidance, and now we finally have it. And, um, you know, to echo George and others, you know, if you can take the ball and at least try to move it down the goal line, you know, down mm -hmm. the field, that would be great. But, you know, I, I, I don't hold out much hope because usually it's, you know, a month from now is the first time there's a conversation, and then somebody goes out of the country for two months, and then it's August, and mm -hmm. you know the complaints come in, and it's you know it, it's like clockwork. The trip out of the country just was completed, so uh, that, okay. that's that's a good sign. Well, maybe to the start attorney's with. trip out of the country. There you go. Later that's true. Spring. That's true. So I, I'll take a we'll take a stab at it. I'm working with the town manager. This is uh, since this is a town property. Uh, the town manager feels that uh, both the town and the historical society uh, need to push this issue uh, along and get it uh, resolved, hopefully, to a point where both parties uh, are agreeable. Uh, if that does not happen, uh, I will bring it back to this commission for you folks to uh, uh, arbitrate, shall we say. Um, I'll make every effort to see if we can come up with something. If not, I'll have to talk to the town attorney as to under what, you know, process it would come back to you guys whether it's a show cause hearing or whatever it might be so what that would be a, a secondary uh, uh, step but nevertheless um, I will certainly uh, uh, see if we can get this um, get this going in the right direction and then keep you posted on uh, how we are uh, succeeding or not well tell the new town manager this will be the criteria by which his success or failure in the job is judged. <laughs> wow. Wow. And guys, I That's a recipe for failure. A little bit of pressure. I wanted into his office, what, two weeks ago, Peter, with Sydney in Wonder. there complaining about the flooded parking lot behind here. You know, water up to here with one of these, one of our two big flood type things. There's a lot of water recently. Have you met with the manager as... You know, as a town engineer suggested, even he got it's on the town manager's agenda. Uh, what they do, I, I, there's an issue of whose responsibility that is under the lease, so it may not right. be the it's town's. Complicated yeah, it's not. Flooding issue. Correct. So, so our new town manager's okay. issue is a wall. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> build a wall. <laughs> who's gonna pay? Yeah, right. yeah, sell <laughs> I, I want to hear. The I want center is going to pay for the wall. <laughs> <laughs> the right. neighbor's going to pay, right? <laughs> Shut down the town. <laughs> Peter's going to attempt to. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't read anything over three pages. So that was intense. The so um, it's very favorable decision. Yes, yeah, so it was a. It just it wasn't. It didn't make it on your uh, correspondence because it came in very uh, last minute on uh, Friday. Uh, late in the morning, but uh, this decision was announced on Friday. It's uh, obviously the town of Weathersville versus PR Arrow, which is uh, regarding 61 Arrow Road. This goes back to the um, the outside uh, truck uh, operations that were going on there for a while. This was a an appeal of the original decision that we had won. Um, I would characterize this as the town of Weathersfield winning on all counts, including the attorney's fees and fines and and all of that so we're waiting to see if the um the pr arrow uh files additional um you know appeals to this uh, or is uh going to uh, rest uh, at this point in time but it was um if you have uh some time there were some um interesting uh comments made by the uh by the judge you know, on some of the arguments, which I thought was 
interesting. But um, nevertheless, uh, town town attorney, town uh, manager, um, former zoning officer, and present zoning officer were uh, very pleased with the uh, with the decision. So, should be it was a it was a good victory. Yes. Um, so. It's very limited. You guys. Yeah, a very limited right of appeal anyway. From yes. Here on yes. It is. So hopefully this is the um, this is the end of it. Um, the application that's pending um, CCC construction is not scheduled for next the next meeting. It's the first meeting in um, March, so I believe um, you will have the next meeting uh, the night off. Um, so. Thank you. Yep. Act accordingly. Yes. <laughs> one, one, last, one last thing, and, and I, I'm not going to belabor it, is, um, and it's not your job, but could someone remind the ZBA and their staff of the zoning regulation that requires use variances to be referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission for review before they're acted on by the ZBA? Because... There have been, I would bet, dozens of them granted over the past 10 or 12 years that haven't been sent to us for review. And it only caught my eye when I asked, what's the sign for in front of that old candle store on the Berlin Turnpike and found out that it was asking to expand the car dealership there and that there had been one the month before at the old pet supplies on the Berlin Turnpike for another car dealership. And, you know, maybe it's my pet peeve or the great white whale, but I mean, I have a problem with those things generally and philosophically, but, you know, more fundamentally, you know, we made a conscious decision when we revised the regulations 15 years ago because so many things were being granted use variances by the ZBA that we at least wanted to get a chance to weigh in on them. Most of them are not important, but frankly, I think some of them are. So, you know, I'm not yelling at you by any means. And I, I have reminded okay. the various zoning officers over time. So I don't know if it's a function of, this, you know, having four different zoning officers over a relatively yeah, short period I'm of time. Sure but uh, I, I wasn't on, obviously I wasn't on the, the commission uh, when those regulations were adopted. I've always wondered why we have use variances anyway. I, we have to. Does the state law require that we have to have use variance, uh, a provision for use variances? You can't, you can't prohibit use variances in your regulations. I know sometimes I've seen them in their regulations where they've been, where use variances are prohibited. I didn't realize that uh, those... Those provisions violate state law. I think you can't prohibit anybody for applying for anything from the ZBA that's in your regulations by philosophy. Uh, people have asked me, well, why would they even consider that? Because they comply for it. Whether they meet the test is the ultimate question. Um, I've but, seen in some towns where they per, where they permit use variances, they have a higher mm -hmm. standard of criteria where, in essence, you have to show there is no reasonable use whatsoever for the property absent the use variance. Well, I think I think ours has some enhanced standard like that, um, you know, and also that you can't grant a use variance for a use that is otherwise prohibited everywhere in town. So it can only be, you know, a use that might be permitted in another zone. Right, but, but just not something that is blanket prohibited. Okay. Like breweries, for example. Right. Okay. Mm. Yeah, but those are That's interesting, things. isn't it? <clears throat> Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Okay. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Hold and listen to our president. Time to start. Yeah. Curse of Oak Island. What's that? <laughs>